question. If you're making a 2D pixel art game and you want to animate a character doing a bunch of different things, like walking, running, fighting, how do you do that? Oh, I know this one. You boot open your favorite image editor, draw out some pixel art frame by frame, and then play that back into an animation. Is what a little bitch would say. A real man would model up a 3D character, rig it with bones and inverse kinematics, plop that bad boy into the game engine to manipulate it into any pose imaginable procedurally at runtime, and then render that out into 2D pixel art. Over engineering, the act of being a fucking lit all right, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail as to why I'm actually doing this because it'll probably bore most of you to shit. All you need to know is that it's gonna make the final game's animation look absolutely goddamn schmick. Like no other 2D game you've ever seen before. Even better than Dead Cells. And they use 3D animation as well. Me like big robot. You like big robot? Mm -hmm. We take a bunch of big robots. It's called mechs. Get an arena. Put the mechs in the arena. Mech arena. Eh? Yeah, look, if that's not enough to sell you, I don't know what is. Maybe the fact that it's a tactical 5v5 team-based shooter. That's casual enough for you to play a quick round in the time span that it takes you to squeeze out a dookie. Yeah, look, don't actually play it while you're taking a shit. That'd be a little bit weird, but you could. Each big robot, though, has a special ability to make other robot go boom boom. There is a metric load of ways that you can customize these bad boys. Bunch of cool skins, weapon upgrades, all that kind of cool stuff. But let's talk gameplay, all right? Unlike a certain game, <coughs> this one actually has it. You got your standard control point capture, okay? Boop, 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 boop. Get all the flags, easy peasy, squeezy lemon. 2v2 team deathmatch, or 5v5 team deathmatch, whatever tickles your pickle. And even tournaments, pretty cool. Go solo or play with mates. There's new mechs, weapons, game modes being added in every month. Mech Arena, or what I think it should really be called, Big Robot Game, is gearing up for its official worldwide release in August. But if you're in the US, UK, Canada, or one of the other lucky countries like my own, it's completely free to play on Android and iOS, so go ahead and scan this QR code on screen right now with your mobile device. Unless you're part of the 50% of YouTube viewers who are actually watching this on their mobile device, in which case you can't... That's not gonna work, so just go down to the description and click on the link. You'll get one gold crate, 15,000 credits, and 200 A coins. Okay guys, this is literally gonna be the next biggest thing, so get in while it's hot. I don't know why I'm doing American accent, it's kind of racist of me. Sorry mate freedom-loving friends. Deuces. I got the idea for this ages ago when I came across this GDC talk on procedural animation from a guy who worked on a game called Overgrowth. And to sum it up... So in the future, I think we really need animation and code to work cl more closely together <laughs> so that we can use the code to like help offload repeated tasks from the animators. You might want to watch that on two times speed. <laughs> so if you keep on identifying any repeated animation tasks and extracting them out and making good tools for the animators to use while doing that, I think that could save a lot of time. It would also allow animators to focus a lot more on the performance and less on the like busy work, like transition animations and re repetitive things. David Rosen, you are one sexy motherfucker. Really appreciate this absolute wisdom nugget of a talk. Big love. Full vid is in the description resources. Okay, Randy, that looks great and all, right? Amazing, but how are we gonna do that? I'm about to do probably the hardest thing I've ever done, full stop, in my entire life. I think that's an accurate estimation of what's about to happen. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, I've had this idea for quite a while now. And back when I came into fruition, Ryan actually did up a little demo for rendering a 3D model in game. So I did a bit of snooping around the code base to try and figure out how to bring that in. God damn, that's cool. Look at that. Look at him go. Well, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it'd be. So I uh, guess that's this video. See you later, guys. <laughs> you didn't really think that would be the end, did you? Now, while it may look like it's working nice and well, I have no idea how the fuck it's doing that. 
So I spent the next couple of days researching how the hell 3D models work. I found this really nice paper by old mate Marcus Lundgren explaining just that. Marcus, if you're watching this, absolute legend. Thank you, sir. I also came across this library called Asimp that can import a shitload of 3D formats into one cohesive intermediary. <laughs> Yummy docs. And so begins the birth of .tsm, the telescope 3D model format. This bad boy is going to contain everything we need to pull off this kind of cool shit. With a single batch file, MSVC, and old mate Windows, I went about creating my very first C program from scratch. Look at that. Fuck, that's amazing. I love that. That feels so cool. <laughs> the next step was to integrate Asimp and link to it. So after wrangling with that for a few hours, getting it to build, all that sort of cool stuff, I uh, finally got it up and running. We are in action, baby. Let's go. Now, obviously we can't actually open the file because, um, well, we don't have one. So I cracked open Old Mate Blender and got to work. I'd like to introduce you guys to Ron. Ron is allergic to cats identifies as a non-binary Westinghouse 54 centimeter freestanding electric oven slash stove. He's single and ready to fuck. Hobbies include playing tennis, surfing, and shoving his cock in toasters. I exported our little guy to the collada format and imported it into the new program via Asimp. Flicking through this scene structure looks like all the data has made it through, so uh, we're ready to rumble. Before I get too ahead of myself though, let's get back to old mate testmodel.c. How does this equal this. I scaled Ryan's telescope code and compiled a list of pretty much everything that goes into it. Uh, and for my next task, well, you guessed it. Uh, so I just went ahead and learned everything about how OpenGL rendering works and distilled it down into these notes here. And by the way, this program is called Evernote, 10 out of 10, would note take again. One note can go short or on my left nut. So after wrapping my head around OpenGL and relearning it for the second time after about two years, this is why it's important to take notes, kids. Oh my God, this code actually makes sense now. What's basically going on at this step is we're creating one big fuck off vertex buffer on the GPU that contains all the model's vertices. And in each vertex, there is data about its position, UV coordinate, and normal. It's getting goddamn cold in Brisbane. It's like fucking zero degrees outside right now, on guard. Okay, maybe not on guard, on guard, but like plunging temperatures and snow for NSW. I want snow. Ah, YouTube video. I'll <laughs> just do that for the next half an hour. <laughs> no, YouTube equal danger. We don't go there. So our next step is to take all of Ron's data, which we've gotten this scene struct over here, thanks to old mate Asimp. Take that, okay, put it into this format and then pull a cheeky little switcheroo. Very, very simple. There we go. Runs in the game, baby. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I have the biggest erection right now. The normals on the lighting definitely don't look too right, but I'm just happy that it's in. <laughs> Uh, so I just spent the last four hours trying to figure out why my normals were wrong because you know They looked like they were acting weird for diffuse lighting. I'm like, you know, what's 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 uh, what's going on here? I'm Bucko. Turns out absolutely nothing wrong <laughs> It's just because it was such low poly and the diffuse lighting was being clamped It looked like something was wrong, but it's in actuality. We're fine. Um, so what do I do now? <laughs> So I could do one of two things right now. I could either implement materials and get them like textured and colored and all that sort of shit. Or I could do the meat and potatoes of this entire system. Skeletons. That one sounds a lot more daunting. Let's do that. I've already rigged my boy run up with a skelly. But what I got to do now is figure out how to take that data and stuff it into the telescope model format. The website I've been using up until this point for learning most of this is learnopengl.com. And I thought it just straight up didn't go over skeletal animation, but uh, it turns out it actually does. So that's always lovely. So it's time to absorb a little bit more knowledge. I should really shave, but then again, 
I'm not really going outside, so like... Living that program of life, baby. So a skeleton is a collection of bones. Each bone has a list of vertices with a corresponding weight, that weight being how much the bone influences that particular vertex. And each vertex can be assigned to up to four different bones with four different weights. All of those adding up to a total of 1.0. And you can paint those weights in via the 3D modeling software. So that's its responsibility. The bones are laid out in a hierarchy. So starting at the root bone, which is spine one, it's got three children, spine two, the left leg, the right leg, and then it just keeps going on for the rest of the bones. Right now, old mate Ron, the non-binary electric stove, isn't making use of any of these bone transforms. But with our TSM bone patriarchal hierarchy, say we want to get the position of this bone right here. Too easy. We get its own transform, continuously loop through its parents, applying their transforms along the way. And just like that, ladies and gents, we have a goddamn skeleton. Jesus Christ, that only took me two days to figure out. This shit really ain't that hard. I whipped up Ron's very first animation, Crumple. And drunk on the power of puppeteering Ronald, I created another animation of him hitting a fat yeet. All right, my work here is done. Time to export the collada file. Only one animation, fucking squeeze me. So the Collada exporter for Blender is a little bit munted when it comes to multiple animations. So it's either fix the piece of shit myself or just find a better format. Path of least resistance, baby. The Interquake model format looks like it's got everything. So let me just yonky splonky export to that and... Oh, what's that? Did uh, somebody say FBX? Yay. Yay, it's got all the animations. Uh, but it's also just straight up crashing my exporter. Turns out there's something called leaf bones, which are dummy bones that get it added onto the end of each tree. Uh, we don't really need those, so I can just go ahead and turn that off in the settings. Ron's exporting properly now, so let's bring him into the game and Jesus Christ on a fucking bike. Now, the old Collada format I was using before was just all kinds of messed up and just spoon fed me all the vertices, even if those vertices were duplicates. But this new format doesn't do that, and as a result, we've dropped from this many vertices down to this many. So I'm going to switch it up, and instead of rendering via vertices, I'm going to render via indices. And to get the indices, we just loop over all the faces of the mesh and store those guys in the correct rendering order. These bad boys then index directly into the vertex buffer, which basically allows us to duplicate vertices without actually physically duplicating them and wasting a lot of memory. And that right there seems to fix things. Kinda. His entire ass has just disappeared and he looks like he's skipped leg day. Okay, now remember before when I said that it's the modeling program's responsibility to ensure all weights of each vertex add up to equal one. I don't know about you, but I don't think 0.57 plus 0.15 plus 0.15 is equal to one. Blend is a lot of fun. Yeah. One whole day later and we are back to uh, approximately one minute ago in the video. But now we've got animations. I then spent the next day combing through the animation code to get that slapped into the telescope model format. Each bone has got a list of keyframes for us to animate through. That way each bone can be translated, scaled, rotated. Wait, that's a VEC4. Rotation is just pitch your roll, right? It's only got three components, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, look, long story short, they glow really brightly under a UV light. Uh, just go follow my Instagram if you want to see more. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, chuck a cheeky comment, all that kind of good stuff. You know what to do. Yeah, look, you're already supporting this video a shit ton just by rocking up and watching it. So really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Next vid will be out in probably another month or so. Um, <laughs> Turnings are going to be a bitch. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Stay strapped, stay clapping, and I'll uh, see you next time. Adios, amigo.